shalom to each one of us and it's always good that we might hear the word of Yahweh God that it might strengthen us. We come to understanding our God by being obedient to his way. We have to realize there's so many things that's going to happen in the earth, but Yahweh God has given us truth, absolute truth, that if we follow it, we will have absolute peace. Yahweh God tells us everything, and he doesn't leave out anything. In Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13, Yahweh God tells us about a delightful thing that would happen to us if we, if thou turn away thy feet from the Shabbat, from doing thy pleasure on thy holy day, and call the Shabbat a delight, the holy of Yahweh honorable, and shall honor him not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasures, nor speaking thy own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in your house, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it. So Yahweh God has told us that in Isaiah 58, starting at verse 13, that the Shabbat is a delight. And that is holy unto Yahweh. And that we, those of us that would not seek our own pleasure, as it says here, and shall honor him not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasures, nor speaking thy own words, then thou shalt delight thyself in Yahweh. So when we open up the Torah and the prophecy and the writings, we gain very an access to great and awesome knowledge that Yahweh God has told us. His way is a perfect way, and He wants us to relax. He wants us to know that nothing is going to happen to us if we stay in the confounds of what he has prescribed for us for our survival. We have to let loose our fears and have no fears because Yahweh God is with us. If he wants to be rid of us, there's nothing that we can do. But Yahweh God has put forth to the nations and the people such devastating things that will come upon them. And he has told us if we are to be saved, how we can bypass those things that Yahweh God said that if it be possible, if we go to Jeremiah 31, Yahweh God has said things that if it be possible, this is showing the love of your God that he has for you. And that he, he definitely wants to bestow upon you the greatness of his love because he said some great things concerning you. If we go to Jeremiah 31 verse 35, what does he say? Thus saith Yahweh, which giveth which give the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance by the, of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea, which, he, which the ways therefore for therefore Yahweh of hosts is his name. If the, if those ordinances depart from before me, saith Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus saith Yahweh, if heaven above can be measured, and if the foundation of the earth search, uh, stretch out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith Yahweh. So Yahweh God said, in here that this was never a religion he said if that if those ordinances depart from before me 
said Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. If we go even over to Jeremiah 33. Verse 25, Yahweh God says that, Thus, thus saith Yahweh, If my covenant be not with the de with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. What did Yahweh said? He said something so beautiful. He says, Thus say Yahweh, if my covenant be not with day and night, if his covenant, if his rulership, and if I have not appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth, he says, if I did not do this, if this was not my doing, therefore, he says, that it, he said, then I will cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant. He said, if he did not do this, but also he says here, and he makes a statement here, he says, thus said Yahweh, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars, for a light by night, which divides the sea, when the waves thereof roar, Yahweh of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, said Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation. Thus said Yahweh, if heaven above can be what measured, and the foundation of the earth searched out, I will also cast off the seed of Israel for all that they have done, said Yahweh. Yahweh God. And then he goes on to say that if he did not, thus said Yahweh, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinance, if he said, if I didn't do these things, he says, if, if, if on the other ones, he says, if the sun for, for light by day and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for light by night, which divide the sea when the waves they are roar. Yahweh of hosts is my name. If those ordinances, he said, these ordinances, these rules, if this stuff stops happening, he said, I'll cast them off. I won't have anything to do. If you, search, if you can search out and measure, if you can do these things, Yahweh has put it before them. That's how much he cares about us. And he said for all of the things, because people brought up, and they told them, man, Israel, look what Israel has done. But Yahweh God has stood for us. He has stood for and gave the nation something. And he said, at the end, he said, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob. He said, if I didn't do these things, then will I cast the seed of eight Jacob away. So what I'm saying to you, we must have a great admiration for Yahweh. Because Yahweh God truly loves us. And he wants us to be obedient. And he's not going to break his covenant with us. He tells you, even when we go to the same chapter, Jeremiah 33, verse 20. Thus said Yahweh, if ye can break my covenant of day and my covenant of night, and that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon the throne, and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers, as the hosts of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sands of the sea measures, so will I multiply the seed of David my servant and the Levites that minister unto me. Moreover, the word came on to, to, 
came to Jeremiah, Consider thou not what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which Yahweh has chosen, he has even cast them off. Thus, thus they have despised my people, that they should, should be no more a nation before them. Do you hear this? This is, this is so beautiful that Yahweh is putting a stamp of approval. And this is Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 20. Starting in verse 20. And Yahweh said, Consider thou not what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which Yahweh has chosen, he has even cast them off. Thus, thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. See, they don't want us to be a, a nation. But Yahweh God told them, he says, Thus said Yahweh, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I had not appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth, then will I cast away. And he said, if I didn't do these things, Yahweh was putting it on him. He said, if I didn't do these things, then we would never be a nation again. And this, see, people don't realize, what does it say here? It says, consider thou not what this people have spoken, saying, the two families which Yahweh has spoken. And see, the thing is, you have to be very careful speaking against people. You understand? Even in, in Psalm 50, Psalm 50, verse 20. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Did see? Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Go ahead. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. See, the thing is, is that there are things that you say about people that is so displeasing to your God, your house. And the nations have spoken ill will of us. They have turned their backs and, and plotted against us that Yahweh God is displeased with them because they have said, you can't say anything. Even remember Marion, his sister, and, 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 and Aaron spoke against Moses and Yahweh said, how dare you speak against my servant? It's right in here. You can't say this anything. You have to watch what you say to the conserving, concerning the servants of Yahweh God. When we look and we, we see that evidently, it says, Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. So evidently, they were brothers. And he said, Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. So they were kin in that they had the same mother and father. And that they make that his brother made accusations of slander concerning him. And Yahweh God says, let's go over what does he say here? She's still on phone. Twenty one. These things thou hast done, and I kept silent. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. What he said, these things thou does, and I kept sound. Go ahead. But I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thy eyes. That's right. See, so Yahweh God said, because of the slander. And we want these people in America to slander us. We want them to tell lies and propaganda. Let them come on. Let them. Hey, come on. Tell these things that aren't true. Because Yahweh hears it. And Yahweh is displeased that you would say something against his servant. We are the servants of Yahweh. And they rise up an evil report against us. Telling the, the natives of other lands and bringing up an ill report concerning our conduct and behavior. It ain't nobody that has shown more loyalty to America than this black man. And therefore, they tell that we're lazy, we're thieves, we're murderers. 
Let him continue. We want to say, come on with it. <laughs> Don't stop. Come on, put the drugs in our community because Yahweh God sees this and he's displeased and he said, I'm going to raise them up. And Yahweh didn't say he was going to hide us. Let's go to Psalm 23. He didn't say he was going to, I'm going to hide them. Yahweh's not going to hide us. Yahweh God ain't going to hide us because Yahweh God understands that they say these things out of jealousy. Psalm 23. And what does it say here? Verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yes, sir. Yahweh said he will prepare a table. In the presence of your enemy. Because what, what I'm saying to you is because your enemy. Yahweh is not going to hide what he's going to do. He says he's going to raise you up right before them. He's going to spread forth a table before, right before them. Yahweh God makes statements because he's not going to hide what he's going to do to, for us. He's going to bring destruction upon those that hate us. He's going to raise us up in the house of our enemy. And those that hate us and has prop put propaganda of our conduct and it isn't true. Yahweh is not going to hide this. And we should be thankful and therefore we should make our conduct acceptable before Yahweh God. So that Yahweh God will be able to do as he pleased because he is a God of righteousness. And therefore when we go to Joel chapter 3 and he says write down at verse 7. What does he say? Joel chapter 3 verse 7. Okay we must um, behold I will raise them out of the place where ye have sold them I will return that recompense upon your own head. That's what he says. And he says, And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabines, to a people far off. For Yahweh has spoken it. Who has spoken it? Yahweh God has spoken this. There's no one that can do wrong to us and slander us and make ridicule of us and not pay the total price of their measure that will be given to them in punishment. Yahweh is not pleased when you raise up against his people. You understand what I'm saying? That's why Yahweh God said that he what? He said, I love Jacob, but I hate Esau. Because Esau and Jacob being brothers. And the brothers and the circumstances by which their brotherhood should have united them. Esau rose up because of the blessing. But the blessing that his father gave was in-house. His brother shared it with him. But it was a perpetual hatred that Esau has for his brother to this very day that he can't let loose. And therefore, where you think you at but in the house of your brother? This is the fulfillment of the blessing to his own children. And therefore, Yahweh God has seen fit that we come, but our brother went and got us. We didn't volunteer to come here. And our brother slays us. Nothing was more vicious in American history than lynching in the South. And, and how they continue to lynch us even in New York. Nothing was more hideous that they lashed out at us because we don't fight against white individuals. We fight against a system that we can't win. But Yahweh God he can win because we must remember where we at, our freedom. 
in this country depends upon we must know where we're at. And I would like to say that when we know where we ha at, what does it say in Exodus chapter 3? And I would like to bring this to your attention. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians, and to bring them out of the land unto a land, unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, the Havites, the Jebusites, the Prejudicites, the Havites, and the Jebusites. So Yahweh God was going to bring them into a nation. The Canaanites was there, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perjusites, the Havites, and the Jebusites. Six nations would be in that land. Yahweh wanted to show Israel, but they were in the land of Egypt. And Yahweh said, I've seen and Yahweh have heard the affliction of this vicious, how they have sabotaged our image in the world. He's heard it. There's slander. And just like we have to know where we're at, where are we? When we go into Deuteronomy chapter 28, you got to know where you at. And we go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Once you understand where you at, then you know what to expect. What does it say, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68? What does it say? And Yahweh shall bring thee in Egypt again. What does it say? And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again. Again. That means you in Egypt again. Therefore, that which happened at the first time will happen what? The second time. Because this is Egypt again. And therefore, when we understand this is Egypt again, then we should know what to expect in the land of Egypt. And I shall bring thee into Egypt again. What, it, what, what else does it say? The ship by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. That's right. And therefore, in the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 19, Egypt shall be desolate, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness, for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. That's it. That's see. See, we're in Egypt. Egypt will be a desolate. This is Egypt. Who you eat? Edom. But Judah shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will clean their blood that, that I have not cleaned. For Yahweh dwelleth in Zion. When you read this, you know your hope. You know what's going to happen. You must rest comfortably in your God. There's no help for you. You cannot have an audience by which you're going to say, we have to draw up some, some plan that we might know what to do. It's already been drawn up for you. What must you do? You must keep the commandments of your house. That's your only hope. Your hope is to do what has been put in writing in this book. There's nothing else for you to do. Yahweh God has put it and told you exactly what you should do for your salvation in this land. And he's given it to you so that you might comfort each other. Yahweh God don't want you to run from place to place. 
and be scared. What does he say in Zephaniah? Zephaniah chapter 2. He wants you to put this in place for your own safety. What does he say? Zephaniah chapter 2. This, this, this is a beautiful thing. Yeah, our God is giving you what you need to do so that you might be safe and you might feel your own strength so you don't go by the wayside and that we might be among each other and encourage each other in his words. So Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. And Yahweh God says some beautiful things. Uh, Together ye gather together, O nation not desire. Oh, be not desire. Gather yourself together, O nation not desire. That's what it says. What? Uh, before the decree bring forth, before the days pass, as the uh, calf, before the uh, before the fierce anger of Yahweh upon come upon you, before the day of Yahweh anger come upon you. So he says, Yahweh God tell you. Gather yourself together, O nation not desire. And we are a nation that's not desired. Nobody desires us. You're not desired because the propaganda is so vicious against you. And they believe it. Yeah, our God, we thank you for this wonderful and lovely day. And we pray, Yahweh, and we thank you for your Shabbat. Means, and the Torah means everything to us. Yahweh put upon us the spirit of obedience that we may love you with all our mind, with all our body, with all our might. Yahweh God, may we love thee with all our mind, with all our body, with all our might. 
Amen. Amen.